hey man, these artists and managers are at a war, and bro, I I think it's gonna be a little bad. There, there's some conflict going on, but I want to hear people's opinion on this episode because there's a take that has been shared mm-hmm. where a manager he has an opinion on what the agreement with artists should look like, and artists. Let's see if y'all agree. <laughs> if I'm a restaurateur, I already know how to run it. I could put the money up for, for the location. I know how we're going to make it big. You just cook. Great. We're 50-50 partners. You cook. I run the restaurant that's going to make us all the money. So to me, it's like the partnership of manager and artist should be a real partnership. It should be because I'm putting the same sacrifice. I'm giving my same hours as you are. I'm late at the studio. I'm sacrificing my family the same way. I'm putting my own money into paying my flights and stuff because you don't have money to pay me yet. Mm-hmm. And I agree that if the artist then blows up and becomes, I don't know, the weekend, then you can start lowering the yeah, percentage yeah, sure, of a sure. manager as that goes because guess what? Now I don't have to chase so many opportunities that are coming to us. So I'm going to lower that level of percentage yep. to match my duties and my jobs that I'm doing now. But at the beginning, the first couple of years, the first contract should be 50-50. We should be us working together with one goal to build partnership, to build a business, an entity together. And All right. So I want I'm, I'm gonna tell you my takes on this record, see what you think about it. But first of all, shout out to Lex and the Manager's Playbook podcast. That's where you can find a full episode for this. But let's let's hop off the roof first and foremost, because <laughs> I've been trying to tell artists for a minute now. Like you know how we say artists should make more money in music, and there's a lot of artists that don't have the amount of money they should or any money at all. It's hard out here making money in this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What do you think about the people who are making their money as a percentage of what the artist is making? I mean, I mean, if I had to guess, you know, they're 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 probably even more in a bad position. Now that's what I'm saying. You gotta <laughs> assume that the manager might be struggling even more. If I'm only making ten to twenty percent of your hundred percent, that's barely anything. That's something to be considered. I don't think artists ever think about the other side on that. I'm not talking about the label and these other people who aren't in the trenches with you, but think about the people who are in the trenches with you. All right. Now we will get into some of these takes, but I also, I don't know where I should preface this. So no, I'm just going to share a couple of thoughts from this first and foremost, what he's talking about. Lex is getting into the corporate structure bag, right? There is a business and who's contributing to the business. And then also, from a real person sacrifice level, what does that look like? Yep. If I'm putting in just as much as work as you to get this thing off the ground, should not be able to have an equal percentage. All right. If we're putting in 50 and 50 into the hundred, shouldn't I get an equal percentage? If we had a business, we would be 50, 50 partners, right? Growing this thing together. So doesn't it make sense? Like, cause a lot of people might say you're not making sacrifices or I'm doing more work. Well, what is, that's not the case. What if we are making an equal sacrifice? I think in a lot of ways that makes sense. And he was even, we should keep this in mind. He even said, we can knock it down. We can knock this thing down yeah. as your le- leverage grows, right? And you mean more to the business. And on one end, you can say that's him being reasonable, but that's also him being realistic because here's the other part. The manager has very little stability. Artists can get man- rid of the manager at any given time, right? In a lot of these cases, because yeah. you're just taking a percentage from what the artist uh, is, but the artist has all of the ownership. Artists get new managers all the time. So you are asking this person right, to take a small percentage when you have nothing going on, do a lot of work, and then and this is a 50 50 scenario. So let's imagine that scenario scenario. I'm saying, Hey, Jacory, let's put the equal amount of work in same kind of sacrifices, late nights, forget about your family for a while to build my business. And then actually I'm going to have the ability to fire you completely. All right. You're not going to have any, any, um, equity in this business. All right. But you're, you're living off of commission completely 100% from the beginning. That's a when we wonder why it's so hard to get people to invest in us, like for a ma- to be a manager. Does that sound like a good deal to you, artists? No, like that does not sound like a good deal, right? No, I know, bro. And and I think the other side of it too, it then comes down to like, what do you want your manager to value, right? So we also have heard stories like 
oh, you know, the manager was making shady moves or, or things that were in the artist's best interest, and then you could tell it's all about the money, and it's like, bro, this is why, bro. Like, if, if I'm not being com uh, fairly compensated for, let's say, all aspects of the thing I do for you, because, yeah, man, me putting that, organizing that spreadsheet of tour dates didn't make, didn't make you no money, right? It was, it was a thing we needed to do. We've been talking about doing it for the last yeah. six months, but, like, no money came out of that. So now I'm thinking, like, damn, I could organize whatever back end stuff or, or, or make these moves, but I need to make money. So yes, I'm about to go try to sell this man to a brand deal or go try, you know, work on this mm -hmm. this deal or whatever. And so I think that I don't think artists realize the type of work environment they breed for the people around them when they yep. move a certain way. It's like you almost are training up this group of people to cannibalize you because of all the things you just said. Like, yo, bro, you really put me in a situation where none of this shit ain't guaranteed, so I might as well milk you for all I can get while while shit is good because, yeah. you know, shit might be bad tomorrow. You might up and, and kick me off the team tomorrow, or you might do things that sabotage you that I really can't, I really don't have any control over. Because to your point, right, if the artist feels like the manager is fucking up, the artist can fire the manager. But when the manager feels like the artist is fucking up, what's happening? I'm like, no, man, maybe you just gotta talk to him. Maybe you just need to go get this person to develop him. It's like there's yeah. all these excuses and things that start yeah, coming yeah, up. Yeah. It's like, bro, did you try hard enough to fix X, Y, and Z before yep. you just felt like you couldn't work with him no more? And most yeah. artists would hit him like, man, it's fucked up. Bro wasn't a bad person. He just needed a little artist development. Y'all are trying to get people to take <laughs> a deal that um, y'all wouldn't take yourself. Exactly. That becomes the problem. But now that we get a little shot to the system, okay. let's try to make this a little bit more structural in terms of what it look like looks like and why it could make more sense not a hundred percent of you a fifty percent of you ten percent of you if you look at some of the better agreements in the independent space the actual manager type figure has real incentive and it does look closer to like a 50 50 yeah right but it looks more like a jv type deal just like you might have a label that does a 50 50 partnership with a uh, major label. Yeah. So you have this company. I think Brent Fias and, and Ty Bazin have like some relationship similar to this. I, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, people who are listening, but it's like, hey, there's a company, mm -hmm. right? And we have stake in this company together, 50 50. Mm -hmm. There's a partnership in this company. And you could change that and adjust it, say 40 60. You could play with that a little bit if you want to, but there's a company that we jointly own. The artist is signed to that label, mm -hmm. right? Or that company that we own together. And then we can move beyond that, mm -hmm. right? Like, so that's different than the, I just own the artist or I'm just making a pure percentage of what the artist is because there's an actual business infrastructure there. And I think once you start looking at it that way, which is how I see most independent artists who actually have more of a partnership with their, their managers and, and team, uh, move like then I think it starts to become easier to think about it as like the percentage versus oh this person just has a percentage of me no we have right a percentage of a company I am the primary asset at the moment and that and we're building revenue from my activities and that's what's feeding the company and yeah. that's what we bust down from there that should help you know hopefully and then just to get into their relationship a little bit more. Last I read, I could have sworn they had a company together. They have their percentages of that company, but then Brent Fias, from what I understand, his label that he has that Tommy Richmond is signed to, I think that's his label. That's not him and Ty's label. And then Ty has something um, that he's doing that isn't necessarily Brent's, right? Mm -hmm. There could be really mutually benef beneficial relationships. And just because you're working with somebody, it doesn't mean like they're, involved in every single aspect of all the business you do but if you have a great relationship y'all keep building the obviously leverage goes both ways and then y'all can help and provide insights and things there could be different percentages of different types of companies yeah. that y'all all join yeah. i think people just look at it in this finite way so that i feel like will help artists understand how you can get beyond um maybe just a 10 to 20 percent and it's not all final um, in terms of everything you ever do. But let's get into something that's important because artists, y'all got a lot of comments on this post. So shout out to y'all because we're gonna, we're gonna talk about it, right? Like 
this artist, Mr. James K said, I like the corporation concept. Make the artist a corporation. The, the manager is probably the CEO or VP. Everyone has shares. And when they raise money, the label deal or pub deal or start becoming profitable, then salaries and bonuses get distributed. Keeps everybody honest and everyone working. When an artist wants to fire a manager, the next guy can buy him or her out of their position. See, that gives the manager a little bit more stability. I don't just get fired overnight and then maybe I'm getting a couple of shares like the sunset clause, mm -hmm. right? For a couple of years, I'm getting a percentage for a given point of time. It's like, no, they can actually be bought out. It is a company um, that they're working with it. Now you can get a little bit more particular into the legal legalese of that. So we're not advising on exactly how to set that up because there's already a couple of things that I could think of that you want to hedge your bet on, but that's not what he, we're here for. This is, is where we get into the sauce of what artists are talking about that I think deserves a response. Cause I saw a couple people with this kind of opinion. All board Sim said an artist can only have one manager. A manager can manage several artists. Based on that alone, I think it makes sense that the percentage is lower. First of all, artists can have more than one manager. That is not the truth. There's artists that have, even if we get into the traditional, you got a road manager, you got a business manager. Day to day, you got a main manager. Day to day, it depends on how big you are. Now your income and your level <laughs> might only allow you to have one manager, but no, artists can have more than one manager, even when you get into agents and all these other aspects of things. Mm -hmm. There's artists who are multifaceted in terms of their creative output, so they have the managers and day-to-day -day managers and agents in, in the world of music, and then they have the same thing in the world of acting. Like, you know what I mean? And then you can go start a company like what Rihanna has done. And those are CEOs and things like that of what, what exists there. Yep. So no, you are not as, um, what word am I look monolithic as you think you are in terms of the businesses and your capabilities and involvement. Now on the other side of this, an artist, a manager can have multiple artists that they work with. Here's something that many of y'all need to hear, not just for your manager, but other people that y'all are doing business with, artists, stop pocket watching the people you're doing business with. Right. Like, right. it doesn't matter <laughs> if he can do other business outside of that. What matters is if your manager, he or she, is doing a good job for you, right? And they're doing what they're supposed to. That's all that matters. Now, if they're not doing a good job, then now you have a conversation based on that. Yep. But don't say, oh yeah, they're doing an amazing job, but oh, I'm jealous because they also making money over there. Now you're just telling me you want to limit the growth that I can have potentially. And why would I want to work for you in the same way that you would think that y'all keep asking for stuff that y'all don't want. And a lot of people are hedging their bets and talking about bad managers. When I like read through these comments, they're basically like, well, are they putting in enough effort? Right. Or like, cause if they're not putting in 50, 50 effort, this sounds like relationship, red pill, blue pill stuff to me. It's like, why do y'all keep giving, all this advice on relationships based on being with the wrong person. Fuck that. Just don't be with the wrong person. You know what I mean? It's like, oh yeah, cause I need to check her phone or I need to put her through this test and that test. No, bro, don't be with her. You know what I mean? <laughs> y'all are wasting y'all's time thinking about that stuff. Keep that joint simple. But if you are with the right person, right? Then that is when you're looking to bust it down in the right structure. So that's what you should be looking at. What's the ideal structure and the structure that's going to incentivize people to give me the best output, all right? Create the best type of entity. And then who are people who are worthy of that? Now, if you can't find that for the time, it's times where it's like, oh, I got the manager now and this manager, just their skill level wise or their mentality wise, they're probably not going to be a business manager or they're not going to be the manager who could do the big deals. But when I get into a level that I can uh, be worth a, a higher level manager in that way, this person can transition to maybe a day to day or something. Mm -hmm. And I can be their training ground where, you know, five, 10 years from now, now they can be a high level manager for some other artists. But because of the speed that I'm moving at, it doesn't make sense for them to become those other managers, which again, it goes back to the fact you can have multiple managers. So you have to think about it and be able to see it that way. Let's take a quick commercial break to talk about Spotify discovery mode. One of the most powerful tools when it comes to marketing music today, because it puts your music 
in the algorithm on Spotify to be listened to along with music similar to you without you having to run ads, without you having to do any content at all, which is why a lot of artists tell me they love it. But a lot of artists don't necessarily have access to Spotify discovery mode unless you're a two loss user because with two loss, all artists have a fair shot at getting access to Spotify discovery mode just by submitting through them and they pitch all of their artists music to Spotify to be considered for discovery mode. So if you don't meet the criteria, if you are in the position where some of the larger artists are, sign up for two loss distribution at two loss.com. That's T O O lost.com because that's just one of many extremely valuable features that two loss offers to his artists to make their lives easier and you can try out two loss for free by using the code no label that's n-o-l-a-b-e-l when you sign up so go to two loss.com and check out how you can get your music heard everywhere and add on that real quick too man i don't think artists realize how much of an advantage it is to have a, a manager Yep, that manages other artists because a lot of times what these managers are doing is they're they're looking at who in their roster is strong enough to secure a potential opportunity that they can then bring back to everybody else. So like, hey, I want this Spotify look, but Spotify doesn't care about artists A, B, and C on my roster, but they really love D. What, I'm going to burn the deal because they don't like you artist A? What, I'm going to blow this deal up because they don't like you? No, I'm going to get artist D situated. I'm going to build a relationship, and I'm going to spend time trying to convince them to go fuck with artists A, B, and C in some capacity. So, like, you know, a lot of artists like to throw it out there as a negative, but it's like the the managers that can juggle multiple artists well are usually some of the stronger ones because they're literally multiplying the the level at which they can network and yep. expedite things. You know, because yep. like and and when you as the artist fucks up, you don't slow the operation down because it's like, okay, Sean don't feel like making music right now. This nigga and his feelings and you don't want to be in the house and shit and don't make TikToks and all that. Cool, I'm going to go focus on these people and we can at least yes. keep the business progressing. 100%. You know? And be very clear, this is not me saying, or neither of us are saying, that hey, 50-50 is the exact number that it should be. But there should be more thought into the same way you don't want a standard contract of the standards yep. don't make sense. You shouldn't be thinking I'm going to give a manager a standard contract if the standards don't make sense based on the, your particular situation with that person. It could be less because you're like, yo, man, I only need you to do this, that, and the third. There's been some artists that I've told. It's like, yo, bro, you don't need to be giving an artist 10, 20%. You need to be hiring people to be admin for you, mm -hmm. right? Which is different. They're managing things. They're managing projects for you, but they're not growing. If they're not somebody who's going to be growing your business, it, especially based on where you are because I'm the artist that I were talking to already had a certain amount of things going for them. It's like you don't need to have somebody taking that level of cut from you, right? And if you, if I was you in the way you move, I would just hire a couple of assistants, right? That's a good point. I, I feel like the mentality that artists have about managers, the way a lot of them speak, it's like, yo, you really are looking for employees more than you're looking for a business partner. Yes. An employee will be the perfect thing for your situation, but you probably don't have the resources or the money to outright hire an employee. So now you're looking for this person who is willing to take less than, right, not looking for upfront payment to move things. Managers are, are one of the only few positions in the music industry that can even be convinced to work in that way. It's not too many other roles you can convince yeah. to like, quote unquote, like work for free. You know, it's not like a marketer would never take that, a publisher would never take that, producers, well, maybe producers, but you know what I'm saying? But it's only like a handful of roles in music that will work off of the potential that you might be tomorrow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I, I don't think, I think because artists are so caught up in managers supposedly being that person, they forget that. Yeah. But it's like everybody else in the music industry that you want to believe in you, or work hard for you, they're gonna come with a fee. You know what I'm saying? And so it's this one person that's willing to do that work without his upfront fee, and it's like your response is like, let me give them a, a violating percentage. <laughs> I think yeah. it's, it's crazy. It's yeah. like that point to your point is like, hey bro, if you really want to keep all this money to yourself, go stack up 60k and get you an employee. You know what I'm saying? Drop 60k on somebody for the year, yeah, and and make him or him or her work hard. You know what I'm saying? Build out the tasks for them that line with your managerial goals, and you know what I'm saying? See what come out of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Here's a couple of other comments. Mr. Ben says, hey, artist, before you sign away most of your money to a label, just sign away half of it to me first. So they're being sarcastic. 
they want your show money and your merch money because now that the music isn't as it once was it's dead they have to push stuff like this to make money let me let me just say this <sighs> again first and foremost this isn't a set all agreement to go for every manager every situation even him in this situation said hey if we, we can start like this and then my percentage drops as more is coming in and you have more leverage to not be able to think like that and be creative and be take the offense like you're actually doing yourself a disservice and i get it because the first time i was actually offered a deal for doing something creative myself i was like a percentage bro you want a percentage for everything just like 10 percent. i remember first time i heard that and it was just like off of a off of a, a book that i wrote when i was younger and i was like bro like just introduce me show me some some people some, uh, to some people yeah i'll give you some money or whatever and like we're cool like but why do you need to have 10 percent of everything like that was my mentality i didn't get it and now i get it because i'm older so uh, there's this is not the only field i've been part of many creative endeavors and understand i've been on both sides of it but as you get older you have to understand that other people are people just like you are and will you take the deal that you're asking yourself to take not on you because you're gonna be biased about you i will believe in me go look at another artist who's in a similar <laughs> position yeah would you do that <laughs> Why aren't you doing that? I'm not doing that because I'm an artist too. I got my goals and da da da. Well, they got their goals and the, like it's you have to be able to think about it that way for everybody, not just the manager. Anybody who's working for you on your team or doing any type of situation, because if you aren't able to get out your own self, then you're gonna be trapped uh, and and miss out on getting the most out of the people you want to work for, or work for you. Uh, maybe missing out and losing people that you don't have to lose. And all in all, maybe tricking yourself into thinking that, oh, people just here just because I'm hot or just because they like me. That only goes so far when everybody has a life. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I think, too, man, like the, the thing I've learned as a business owner is that if you want people to do the job well, you give them a salary. If you want people to go above and beyond, you give them a percentage. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I do feel like I think that depends on the person. That's fair. There's but. some people who <laughs> they just need the stability to go be above and beyond. If you put them on percentage for real, for real, they gon they gonna crack and and they just gonna and they they'll really just go to another situation. That's true. That's true. I agree with that. But I know what you mean. <laughs> you for your manager and the people you want to put on the percentage like that, they should want to be on percentage because they should want. Um, to be paid based on their results that they bring in, mm -hmm. not off of like output. I don't want to say output for the sake of output, but you know, output. If I'm doing admin work, that is output. I'm putting, I'm doing a lot of work, or I'm cranking out a lot of editing, or I'm um, like handling X amount of clients for you. That is a type of output, but it's not necessarily increasing revenue or whatever. But they are working hard in a, in a different way. Like that's a different type of competition that the people who handle those positions typically want to be compensated on. Maybe, maybe that's a better way to look at it. If you want people to care as much about your money as you do, you give them a percentage. Right. Because <laughs> if you want them to care about your money as much as you do, some of your money got to be their money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So like, yeah. If I'm just guaranteed, you know, for one, and then, you know, I don't know. It's, it's like the, the employee thing, right? Like, do I want you to care about this all day or do I want you to care about this from nine to five? Yeah, you know, like the percentage and the higher the percentage, the, the more time people are gonna, gonna give up for it. And I mean, I think the part too that like, at least artists, man, if you would have realistically even think about like where the traditional manager percentage comes in, right? Like we think about old music industry, there was a point in time where there were, pro there were probably at least like five, 10 plus employees for every one artist, right? So, hey manager, the reason you're only getting 10 to 20% is because realistically, you may only be doing 10 to 20% of the work. Mm -hmm. You're in the field, you're doing day to day, you're more so keeping the arts in check, and there's a label behind both of you that is making sure all the other wheels turn while you out there doing that shit, that right? And you could argue like, okay, that's fair. Like, I'm not the only one contributing to this growth like there are these people. Now you take it to 2024 and, and moving forward, the average artist situation, like, the average artist team, is, to, from my opinion, is usually like three or four people. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's it's very rare to see a, a an indie team, and not necessarily like we, if we leave out like creative, like music and stuff, but like from a business perspective, 
a lot of the really well ran indie teams that we've seen are like three, four people deep. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe, maybe like six, seven. And so then you're like, okay, there's this now. There's this expectation on this on this person to do three, four, five times more work than they would have been expected to do if they had themselves were actually working in the time when that model was invented, right? Because like the managers of yesteryear. They got your deals. They they kept you in check. They made sure you show other stuff on time. The managers of today are learning Facebook ads. They learning how to, to do brand proposals. They are learning how to run social media accounts. They are learning how to search and tech and yeah, marketplaces like, and should we do this deal that deal? It's a completely different level of different yeah. level of effort. Yep. Yeah, and it's like a lot of times the manager is the person on the team. Like whether artists think of it this way or not, or they they think of it consciously or not. The manager is the person on the team that's expected to go learn and understand the new thing that nobody else on the team is expected. For for sure, and uh, enough to at least be able to make the decision, mm-hmm. like can and can keep this ball rolling. The term manager applied better for yesteryear than it does today. Hundred percent, right? Like Art manager, better. like yeah. we managing what's coming in, making sure everything's straight, logistically, project manager, that type of vibe. Today, it's a lot more growth that goes along with it. So it's more like business development, mm-hmm. all right? Yep. Like or gro- and uh, growth manager or something like that. Uh, but here's here's the last thing I would like to say because I know artists have their, their ways, or they might try, or they might listen to other artists' opinions on these things. I say listen to the artists that have managers, have teams that are successful, teams and are successful, and look at what their team looks like, what their career looks like, and then decide from there. Because I, j- I gave multiple paths for success. The, initially, I wanted to hop off to make sure y'all don't completely poo-poo like this 50-50 <laughs> idea. But then also said that you don't have to go 50-50. It has to be worth 50-50, and that's a different agreement. And you cannot even have anybody that you're doing that type of split with, and you can just have people people that are just straight admin on your team mm-hmm. or getting bit. So they're getting paid fixed amounts or they're getting paid like low percentages. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing that you'll find. If you look at the indie artists who's super business oriented, right? Like for real, for real. And that's something, a part of their game and how they move. You're more likely to find a manager that's getting a lower percentage. All right. Um, Or people who are just getting paid straight up like fixed amounts. Mm -hmm because they are also like a true CEO of their own operation. Yep. All right. Yep. And that's one way to go about it. And that's cool if that's how you want to move and be indie in that way, move in that way, run your business in that way. Like a Nipsey Hussle is that type of figure. All right. I'm not saying I know his particular agreement because I don't know if he had a manager or whatever, but like the way he ran and moved and thought, I could easily see him being that way. There's other indie artists that are popular right now that have similar uh, ways of moving. But then if we're talking about the traditional and you want to stay more in the creative bag as much as possible, but you do want to make sure your business is right, something like a 50-50 to start or 50-50 ownership in this corporation, right, is a very, very real thing. And then, of course, maybe it might adjust as they grow. Or if, But if you own a, a company then you have that manager for the long haul, uh, we're not looking to get rid of his 50-50 as I grow of that company. Uh, we're just looking to maybe bring more acts. So now there's other people he's managing. I don't know, because that might be conflict of interest. We're signing other people together, maybe, right? And I'm getting a part of that income as a part of somebody on that label, right? So now I've just scaled beyond myself in that way. There's there's so many different ways to tweak this, but you got to understand who you are, what you're willing to put in, and the same way you're trying to clock and pocket watch what this manager is putting in, do the same for yourself and be realistic with it from somebody else's perspective. Hey, man, that was beautiful, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Brandon Shaw. And I'm Corey. And we out. Peace. <laughs> Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is we don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play and courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. 
and you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members, and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.